this might be a topic that's been talked out. Honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe you're tired of hearing the word AI in the context of art. If that's the case, then I'm sorry about that, but I feel like this was something I wanted to talk about considering how frequently it's brought up around me and how much I think that artists just really need to hear it. It's not even just about the frustration many artists feel about the fundamental ethical problems associated with the creation process of AI artwork, but I feel like it's legitimately led young artists to feeling like they have to completely discount art as a future career possibility or give up early because they're uncertain about even giving it a shot. And I don't really like to see that because in my opinion and from my honest perspective, that's not true. I think art is still genuinely worth the effort if it's something you care about. And I truly believe that if your goal is to be a freelance artist or work somewhere in an art related field, it's still a valid career opportunity despite the emergence of AI art software. So the focus of this video today will be my reasoning behind that. And if you're an artist watching this video who's currently considering a career in art yourself or you just enjoy learning to draw and developing your art skills, then this is a perfect time for me to bring up the sponsor of this video, Craftsy. Craftsy is an online resource that provides instructional classes for all kinds of artists of many mediums, including but not limited to drawing, sewing, baking, and the like. I gave the site a quick try and I watched a few drawing tutorials, one of which being a video called Drawing Difficult Textures, and it was honestly super well formatted and easily understandable. Backgrounds are one of my weak points that I've been looking to develop for a while now, so this was a big help for me. There is also a class available called Simple Techniques for Better Landscapes, and it was really helpful for like perspective and nature and generally the background of the drawing and making in the speed paint that you're watching. I think joining Craftsy can benefit all kinds of artists, especially if you want to be some kind of professional or freelance artist in the future, because one essential factor to selling your art is mastering many different key areas to open yourself up to more opportunities, which Craftsy can definitely help you out with. If you join the site, you'll be able to access live streamed interactive tutorials, as well as their diverse library of instructional classes, projects, and recipes. If you're interested about Craftsy and you want to give it a try, the first thousand of you to visit the link in the description can access a full year of a premium membership for just $1.49. So with that said and done, let's get into the video. So the first thing I think we should consider here is why people buy art. It might sound simple enough, but I think analyzing that reason is a big part of my case here of why art is still a possible job opportunity despite AI art being a thing. Because I think the reason people buy art isn't actually that simple and there are other factors to it. For one, there's commercial reasons. Someone might want to commission an artist to make them a profile picture or a banner of some kind. Or they might commission a graphic designer to make them an advertisement or a logo or something along those lines. If someone, that being an individual or a company, chooses to commission an artist for one of these reasons rather than just trying their own hand at doing it themselves, it's probably because they're valuing skill, uniqueness, creativity, or originality. A company with its own logo that owns the rights to using that logo will stand out against other brands because that simple design, if made effectively, will be super recognizable and always associated with them. Or on a smaller scale, you just want a cool looking profile picture and you might not be an artist yourself, so to get that profile picture, you might choose to pay an artist to draw one for you. Another reason someone might buy art is to directly financially support an artist that they like. This might sound corny, but a genuine part of what fuels the market is that people love the work or the personality or the ideas or a combination from a specific artist and they want a way to give them money while guaranteeing that they can see more content from them. Every now and then I like to commission more beginner level artists not because there's any artwork I urgently need for a specific purpose or because I think that their skill level fits what I'm looking for, but because I like their work and I want to encourage them to grow. It's part of the reason aside from skill alone of why more popular artists are often more successful. They have an audience of people who who want to commission them because in a sea of artists with commissions open, including artists that might have a similar skill level and charge less, that artist is their idol or one of their favorites, and they want to commission them. There's also the meaning behind art that stands out to people. When it comes to art galleries or traditional art careers up this alley, a lot of people buy art not just because they think it looks cool, but also because the piece speaks to them on an emotional level. It's kind of like how I still buy CDs and vinyls, even though technically I can listen to a lot of this music for free. And that on its own might be something people don't understand, but the reason I do this is because I don't mind paying a bit if that means I can have my favorite music in my hands. Because it's meaningful to me and I want to physically put the needle on the record or pop in that CD. Like my Blink-182 collection or my two favorite non-Blink albums, that being the first Glass Beach album and With Teeth. And another thing that might make people want to commission artists is because of a brand thing. They might think that a specific artist has a style that really fits the vibe that they're going for and if they hire or pay this artist to frequently make art or designs for them, they'll start to build a brand around that style. You'll see this with YouTubers who pay the same artist to make a bunch of their thumbnails or to make their still frames. Or they pay an editor to edit their videos consistently because then there's a professional editing style associated with their work. 
It might feel like when it comes to commercial use, AI art can replace artists. When it comes to very surface level branding needs, sometimes companies or individuals will opt to choose AI over paying an artist to draw something by hand. Because, well, it's cheaper, and it's less time consuming, and they can do it independently. You've probably seen a ton of people on the internet with AI-generated profile pictures or the occasional advertisement that looks painfully AI-generated. Now, when it comes to artificial intelligence in commercial use, it starts to get a little complicated, though. I think artists can still work in this field, because just because AI might be more convenient, there are still going to be companies and people that would rather pay an artist to draw them something instead. For one, AI makes mistakes, and I think it always kind of will. It will definitely get more advanced, and you've probably already observed this happening within just the past year, but that doesn't mean there's going to be a point where it doesn't make a mistake once in a while. Artificially intelligent or not, this is still a computer algorithm and not a person. It won't always understand what a user input is supposed to look like. Something my computer science teacher once told me is that when you're programming, and this applies to using a computer too, you have to treat it like a toddler that will take everything you say 100% at face value. This thing can make mistakes and not do what you want it to do, and when it does that, it can honestly kind of hurt the brand more than it was worth. When it's too obvious that something was AI-generated, because maybe the art had obvious signs that it wasn't made by hand, people start to get irritated at the lack of attention to detail or effort. If a wealthy company or just any person who has spare cash, they sometimes would rather just avoid that trouble and pay an artist. It's why, for example, Ferrari's Instagram still has an artist that makes these beautiful race week posters, because they know that this person is a professional artist and made it the old-fashioned way, so there's less likely to be super drawing mistakes, and they can tell this artist what they're looking for. Not to mention, they can get these posters in the same or a similar style every race weekend, which isn't necessarily easy to do with AI, unless it's all trained off of the same few artists, which gets legally complicated without compensation. To get more advanced AI software to get higher quality generations instead of using free programs makes that idea of trying to save money by going the AI route less realistic. At that point, if you're already spending money, just pay someone to do it. Secondly, using AI art for branding can legally get kind of iffy. It's not like impossible or always illegal, but it really depends on how the AI software was trained and such. Not to mention, I don't think AI-generated art can be copyrighted, which might sound like a good thing, but becomes a bad thing if you're trying to use it for a professional reason. Fred Flintstone is copyrighted, for example, and he will be until like 2060 if my math is right, but if you tried to make a character design like this with AI, you wouldn't be able to copyright it the same way. With this in mind, that again means there will be an abundance of companies still preferring to hire artists or designers over using artificial intelligence. Here's where my big point comes from, art for the sake of art. Even if there comes a situation where everyone who used to buy art decides to switch to AI artwork, which wouldn't happen, but in the hypothetical that it did, I truly believe that artists will always support artists. People who absolutely love art will still support real human artists if they have the money to. This is not copium, okay? I genuinely believe that. <laughs> It might seem disheartening watching people talk about how AI is the way of the future and they're never gonna pay an artist again, but honestly I think the types of people trying to tear down or invalidate artists like this were probably not the people who were paying for art before. Does that make sense? Me personally, I have been and I will still be commissioning artists and there are like-minded people out there who will also be doing this. I enjoy drawing as a hobby. And where did I learn to draw? What motivates me to draw? Who inspired me? My favorite artists that I grew up following, other artists in the community who make incredible stuff. And when I have money to spend, I will commission them, the same way I'll spend $110 on a Ferrari shirt even if I could get illegitimate merch for much cheaper. The same way I will get indie car die casts, the same way I will buy concert tickets even if I'm staring at a screen most of the time anyways. Maybe I'm just consumerist, but there are other consumerist people, I swear. <laughs> In my opinion, so long as the hobby exists, the career will too. There is more to art than how it looks. If you disagree with that, then you're either soulless or just actually lying to yourself at that point. Art has existed in so many different mediums and has spoken to people further than just what it looks like or what it sounds like. Sometimes the most meaningful part about it is the fact that a real person made it. And because of that, I do believe that there are still going to be people who will opt to pay artists over using artificial intelligence. And even if you're worried that, oh, won't AI make that number smaller though? Can I live off of a few people here and there willing to pay artists? And my answer to that with the size of the world, yes, absolutely. You know how a lot of the adult animation genre of TV shows, like shows like BoJack or South Park, might not have the most perfect or fleshed out art styles? In my honest opinion, half of adult animated shows have absolutely wretched art styles. But that doesn't necessarily make the show bad, and the show isn't gonna go out of business. And that's because people don't care much about what art style they're using. 
They care about the relatability of the media, and they care about the humor, and they care about what the art is trying to say. Nobody can complain more about how it feels to be human than a human. And because of that, I think there's always going to be a place for human-made art, no matter how advanced AI software gets. Now, I want to make a concession here. From the perspective of an aspiring computer scientist, I think artificial intelligence is extremely fascinating. I read Frankenstein lately, and something I took away from it is that my general perspective on technology is that I think humans should always try and push the boundaries of discovery if they believe that it'll benefit humanity. And I think that artificial intelligence falls into that category. It's done a lot of interesting things. If you watch that AlphaGo documentary, I genuinely loved watching that, and I feel like when humanity makes technological breakthroughs in this area, it's super cool and inspiring. Then there's also the other side of that coin being War Games, which was really ahead of its time, <laughs> and also happens to be my favorite movie alongside Clueless and Talladega Nights. Ultimately, it's up to people to decide how to handle their knowledge. I don't think we should stop exploring a category of science because of fear of the unknown. There are actually situations where I think that AI can be useful for artists. If you watch the second Spider-Verse movie, I believe if I remember correctly, the artist used AI to speed up the animation process. Of course, this isn't the same as generative AI, and you should definitely familiarize yourself with the difference, but I think developing technology helping artists raise the ceiling of what they can accomplish is awesome. It means artists can put out media that people love at a faster rate. This is not the first time that people are frightened that a new breakthrough in technology would replace people's jobs. It dates back to the industrial era, where machinery was putting people out of their careers because what had to be done by hand in the past was now automated. But it also made new jobs, too. There are still people out there who frown at the existence of digital art, thinking it's not real and doesn't take skill. My perspective is that this is a repeated process that will always happen, and technology won't necessarily mean that a previous job is completely erased, it just changes how that job should be done. The widespread accessibility of the possibility to make digital art doesn't mean that artists just can't exist anymore. But it might mean that to maximize your opportunities as a professional artist, you'll want to familiarize yourself with that medium. It changes how art might be made, but I don't think it's going to replace it. A sewing machine doesn't mean you can't sew anymore, but you might want to learn how to use it, or you might not. You have the choice. Actually, I'd go as far to say that following that logic, art is the only thing that technology can't replace. Because self-expression is a natural human instinct. You can replace the guy who puts caps on toothpaste with a machine that puts caps on toothpaste, but I think there are so many people in the world who will make art with whatever they have at their disposal because that's what people do. And again, so long as the hobby still exists, the career does too. I think what many people don't understand is that most artists are not frustrated with the concept of artificial intelligence or even its potential involvement in the artistic process. The frustration and dislike comes from the unethical production of AI-generated artwork. The fear of no longer feeling safe putting your hard work on the internet because it might be used to train an AI and spit out amalgamations of handmade art that some loser is going to try and pass off as their own original work, or shove in your face to make you feel insecure about your relevance. The distaste is for scamming and unethically sourcing material to train software. I don't think we should shy away at the simple concept of artificial intelligence. I think that's extremely close-minded and also just impractical considering it already exists and is already in use. The war that artists have with AI is not just its base concept, it's how it's being used. And again, how we decide to use technology is up to people. You shouldn't give up on something you care about because you're afraid of what might happen. Especially when there's evidence all around you that that thing you're afraid of happening probably isn't going to happen at all. So stay strong, artists, and keep doing what you love. Before I close out this video with the end card, I want to give a big fat thank you from the bottom of my heart for 10,000 subscribers. This is the most important milestone I've gotten so far. Some of you might already know this, but when I was a kid in the back of my head, I had this dormant dream of being a storytime YouTuber, and I remember thinking back then that my ultimate dream would be to reach 10,000 subscribers, and I remember seeing that as an enormous and unreachable number. So to hit it now is just like, extra sentimental for me. I have so much fun making these videos, and I'm really happy that there are people out there who take the time out of their day to watch them. So genuinely, thank you so much. A while ago I said that for this milestone I'd do a Q&A, so you can send me questions and you have the option to send them anonymously too, with the link to my Tumblr in the description. And that's all for today, hi end card viewers! Thank you for all the art fight attacks so far, they're looking super awesome and you guys have amazing art styles. The highlight of my day for the past week has been waking up and seeing all the lovely art. I always forget how awesome July is every year because of this silly event. I've been streaming every now and then to draw my revenges on Twitch, so you can check those out if you want to. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.